Your Grace, the Archbishop, Cardinal uh, Kudulora, and uh, Honorable uh, Angelo Beda, the co-chair of National Dialogue South Sudan. Invited guests, uh, participants of this uh, important forum, the Archdiocese of Juba Catholic Church. I want to express my gratitude uh, for the invitation uh, to brief you on the high-level revitalization forum led by IGAT. Uh, I will share the first part and uh, advise to the South Sudan Council of Churches, Ferdinand, uh, who was with us also will take part two, uh, particular the last session where we had the opportunity to lead intra-South Sudanese dialogue. I will begin with the introduction so that those of you who have not followed from the beginning may understand how this process came about, how the forum was created. I think all of us are aware that the agreement called ARCIS was signed by four parties. The government of the Republic of South Sudan, the SPLM, SPLAIO, and the SPLM, former detainees, and other political parties. They were only four parties. On 17th of August, 2015, uh, Honorable uh, Angelo Beda put it October. I think uh, I did whisper to Betty that that's not correct because I signed that document, uh, which I have a copy of it here. The 17th of August 2015. We know the government signed uh, nine days later, on 26th of August here in Juba. A transitional government of national unity. Tigonu was formed on 29th of April 2016 after the delay of five months from the commencement of the transitional period of 30 months. On the 8th of July 2016, violence resumed in Juba, house number one, called J1. And Dr. Riyak Mashar Teng, former first vice president of the of Republic of South Sudan, fled the country for his own life. As I speak now, he is living in South Africa under house arrest. The question now is what happened to the arches after July 2016 incident? Some say Arches was dead, at least this was Dr. Lama called position. Some say Arches was in coma. I think this was Dr. Yak position. Others, including Jemek, at least Luca Biong said, uh, Dr. Luca Biong said, Arches was sick. And our chairman uh, of Jemek, Festus Mogai, said it was wounded. Now, because of this description that Arches is wounded, Jemek, that is the Joint Monitoring Evaluation Commission, which is found in Chapter 7 of this agreement, for which I'm a member representing the South Sudan Council of Churches. Uh, this is the body which is responsible for monitoring and evaluation of the implementation of ARCHIS. It recommended revitalization of the agreement. Uh, some of you will ask, what is this term, revitalization? It's just, uh, of course, uh, we are not English speakers, but uh, if you can talk about renewal, if you can talk about revision, if you can talk about uh, adjustment uh, and so on for the agreement. Since it is sick or wounded, you want to make it healthy again, or, or at least you treat the wound so that it is healthy. For those who said it's dead, of course, uh, that probably is not true because the government for which it has been formed is still in Juba. Without that agreement, this government will be dead also. On the 12th of June 2017, IGAT heads of state and government approved the recommendation of JEMEC because JEMEC is authorized to report to all these parties, first to Tigonu, next the Prime Minister of Ethiopia who is the chairman of IGAT, and then 
to the AU and then the UN. That's why this Professor Mogai has traveled to these places almost every three months. Thus, a special envoy for South Sudan was appointed by IGAD. His name is called Ambassador Dr. Ismail Wise from Djibouti. The special envoy carried out a consultation of, on high-level development process with different warring parties and stakeholders for three months and submitted his report to IGAD Council of Ministers. Then the IGAD summit, that is heads of state and government, directed the convening of the high-level representative forum with three objectives. One, restoration of permanent ceasefire. Two, reactivation of full and inclusive implementation of ARCHES. Inclus inclusive means that you have to bring the new players, the other uh, people who just uh, came up. And as I speak now, we have a total of about 18 uh, groups. From original four, now we have 18, including Tigon. Three, revision of timeline and implementation of matrix, implementation of matrix towards holding of a credible elections at the end of transitional period. Now I want to move to my point two on the process itself, the HLRF process. Phase one was held in Addis Ababa in December 2017. And that is what led to the signing of the COHA, Cessation of Facilities Agreement, Protection of Civilians and Humanitarian Access to all parts of the country. It was signed on 21st of December 2017. In addition to that, principle of declaration uh, was signed on a voluntary basis. The government uh, could not sign because uh, they were reserved on Article 18 dealing with accountability. At least uh, the government uh, representative said there is no need to sign something. If you want to hang me, just go ahead and hang. Why should I accept to be hanged? Uh, go ahead. So they refused to sign that document. Phase 2 was held in Addis Ababa in February 2018. And it focused on revitalization of Chapter 1, which is governance, and Chapter 2 on security. These were revitalized, but 10 issues remained outstanding, 5 under governance and 5 under security. It could not move ahead, and the time was up, so he got uh, postponed or adjourned this Phase 2 to give them time to carry out what they call shuttle diplomacy. Instead of people going to the Sababa, it was their turn now to come to this place. They came to Juba, they went to South Africa, they called some members of the opposition to the Sababa. The shuttle diplomacy was carried out by IGAD and the African Union Commission for Peace and Security. Uh, from March to April 2018, to narrow the gap on the 10 outstanding issues. Even workshops were held that brought representatives of different parties together, but the gap remained wide or even increased because you have Paul Malong at this time has also rebelled and he wanted to join them. He wanted to join the opposition. He can then call for continuation of HLRF Phase 2 in May 2017, preceded by two days workshop from 15th 16th of May 2018 on governance and security from other contexts outside South Sudan for comparison. I attended the seminar on governance and a professor from uh, Mo University is a Kenyan. He just gave us a Kenyan context and it was just like ours. If you just remove the, the, the name Kenya and then put us, it's, it's, it's just the same. We were all impressed by the presentation. It means, it means if you want to learn, you just go to Kenya. You have Riyak Mashar here, you have Raila there, you have Salva here, you have uh, Uhuru there. The same hide and seek game. I want to add that the church held prayers in this February session. Uh, 
and during the prayers on the 11th of February at Elili Hotel, Green Hall, one general from the government stood up during the time of announcement. He asked if he could meet alone a South Sudanese delegate. As a, as a bishop among them, I did ask the congregation. Not everybody, of course, was there. And they said, Bishop, this is a good idea. Please forward this request to the special envoy. So on the following day, the 12th of February, after opening prayer as usual, I then made the request on behalf of the congregation. And Ismail Wai said, well, Bishop, we are not sure whether everybody was there, but let me confirm if this is the wish of South Sudanese to meet alone. And indeed, he asked the plenary. Only one guy said, no, this is worth of time. You should just continue with the plenary. We spent the whole week, the week before, just talking in the plenary, and people were trading words across the floor. Uh, but he said, okay, uh, is there any other view? And he was the only person who objected to this. And so he said, now, because you are only one, he ruled then that he will give us at least one day. But exactly that morning, there was fighting in Nasir. Uh, of course, now we know that it's the government who started the fighting. City, city Sumner verified it, it's the government attack. Uh, so that forced I.O. delegates to walk out, and therefore the whole day was wasted without any progress. But it was this time then Isaac was with me from the Council of Churches as technical support team. Uh, we sent a message to Juba. We said there is a request uh, for such a to meet alone. We might be asked to share the meeting. Uh, I was a bit reluctant, but Isaac encouraged me to say, let us accept the principle. If you cannot share the meeting because of the workload, and we know you had had stress last year, we will get reinforcement from Juba. And indeed, we have three bishops who were sent. Bishop Dr. Isaiah Dow uh, of the Pentecostal Church, and then Bishop Dr. Akanjil Wanilemi of the Africa Island Church, and Archbishop of the Internal Province of Central Equatoria, Paul Pitya Yugusu, and Ferdinand came to our rescue. So they, they met uh, the envoy, they met the opposition, they met also the government, and I think they agreed that the idea was, was good. Ferdinand will testify to that uh, when the time comes. Now, before the opening of this session, that is the May session, on 17th of May 2018 at 2 p.m., eager the special envoy, Dr. Ismail Wise, gave South Sudanese delegates the opportunity to meet alone in the morning hours as they had requested in February 2018. That was how the intra-South Sudanese dialogue was born in Addis Ababa under leadership of South Sudan Council of Churches. Our Bishop Justin Badia Rama, uh, our new uh, primate, uh, went there to read a letter from Archbishop Canterbury, and then he was caught up with this process. So he had to chair the meeting, the leadership committee, whereas his two subcommittees of governance and security was chaired by Bishop Dr. Arkanjil Wanilemi, who was actually sent to read the statement from the Council of Churches. And then Bishop uh, Zakaria Manyok Biar of ECS, he went together with uh, these uh, two, and also Ferdinand. Uh, Manyok was chairing the committee, subcommittee of security. The ACC also provides the secretarial services as demanded by the parties. The parties say the church should lead and also take care of the secretariat. They do not trust anybody. Thus, Cardinal von Hasburg became secretary of the leaders' committee, and here with us he will report on that. Edmund Yakani of SEPO became secretary of subcommittee of, go of, go of governance, and Ms. Martha Mathiang for security. She was the secretary for the security subcommittee. Due to heavy workload, we co-opted members from civil society organization. SEC was not anticipating this, this work, so we had few people, so we co-opted from civil society groups, particularly the women bloc, to assist us in the secretariat. But some of them, when they realized that when you're a secretary, you cannot talk, they, they left. But then we, we brought in more others. With the arrival of three other church leaders in Addis Ababa, Bishop John Jock of Akobo Diocese, those of you who saw on the TV, this was the bishop who wept uh, during the service on the 20th of May. He wept because what he saw in Akobo was terrible. It was not fighting between the government and I.O., but fighting among the Nuer clans. 
what Angelo better have said is true. The room back is also in a cover. Archbishop Moses Deng, Board of ECS Internal Province of West Northern Baragazal Province, and also Reverend James Nidrio of PCOS. These people came on their own. Uh, they were not invited by IGAT, but we persuaded IGAT to allow them to come in and reinforce us. Actually, I caught wind uh, that now, because Archbishop Justin Badir is an Equatorian, I myself Equatorian, Archangel Equatorian, now it became an Equatorian issue. So when I got the, the, the message, I, I convinced my colleagues, then we distributed these others so that we diffuse this uh, perception. You know, perception can be real or, or, or false. So we addressed this immediately. So we put uh, Archbishop Moses Adinka with Justin Badi from Equatoria to make sure that issue of ethnicity is, is ruled out, or originalism in this case. James Nidriu, uh, we sent him to the security, together with uh, Zakaria uh, Manyok, with Adinka, from both. And James Nidriu is unwell. And uh, Bishop Okobo, John Jok, and where himself, we put him with Arkanjin Orillam in the governance. So that's how we diffused the, this perception that it was a Kotera led uh, intra South Sudanese dialogue. There were co chairs in the two subcommittees, and then uh, Moses co chairing with Archbishop Justin Arama. As you know, my role remained that of uh, faith based representative for the South Sudan Council of Churches. But this time they say, now, Bishop, you become our chief of protocol. So I, I would place them where they should sit, you know. Some of these church leaders, they're not used to this, uh, how to share a meeting, and then, you know, of these political leaders. But I've been with them since 2014, so I know them <coughs> in and out. My colleague from South Sudan Islamic Council, Mohamed Morjan, became a co-chair for leadership committee. Some people are saying we have sidelined the Muslims. That's not true. My Marjan remained with me as a representative of faith-based uh, group, uh, but the Muslims did not take advantage to come like the Christians. They came to Addis Ababa on their own. Uh, so I will now pass the chance to uh, our brother. And by the way, when, when Majer was given a chance to speak, the one who proposed the prayer, I mean the, the meeting, he asked all foreigners to leave. And Ferdinand also wanted to leave. They said, no, 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 don't leave, you're one of us. Because, uh, you know, he got married to, to one of our daughters. So he's our brother-in-law. So he, he won the confidence of South Sudanese. And I hope he'll continue to be one of us. So please, it's your chance. Bakhita Radio. Radio Bakhita. Sotel Kenisa. The voice of the church.